Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we've got another box from the folks at Hacker Boxes. This is Hacker Box 106, and the name is Epic. Let's get this on the bench and see what we have inside here. This is the Uno Rev4 Wi Fi development board. This is the real time clock battery backup kit. It's got a 2032 coin cell, a coin cell holder, female female DuPont jumper, and some heat shrink tubing. And I also think I spy the USB C to USB A adapter in there as well. This is a USB-C to USB-A 3.0 cable. This is the folding 7-in-1 lock support tool. This is the multifunction expansion shield. This looks like an acrylic base that goes along with the dev board. That'll be nice for preventing shorts on the workbench when messing around. Looks like we've got a couple of hacker stickers thrown in here. These look pretty cool. You know I love some stickers. And last but not least, we've got our HackerBox 106 collectible reference card. On this side, we've got a picture of our multifunction expansion shield. And on the back here, we've got our Uno R4 Wi-Fi pinout. That's pretty nice. Before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. Did you know you can get custom PCBs made starting at only $5? And in addition to their PCB prototype service, they also offer PCB assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. Check the link in the description for more details. And again, we thank PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Just like they always do, the folks from Hacker Boxes have included a great set of instructions here available on Instructables. I have a link to that in the description. But even if you don't have the Hacker Box, you might find it pretty handy. So the first thing this instructable references is the big jump this Arduino R4 is over the previous R3. And it also has a link to a Gary Explains video. Gary goes into a good bit of detail about all the differences between the R3 and the R4 and some of the cool things that are neat with this upgrade. Before moving forward with the instructable, I took the opportunity to snap this protective cover on the Arduino. It's got some little like fastener holes there, but it'll sit and stay in there pretty securely just by itself. The first action item on the Instructable has us plug power into the Uno R4 board and we should start seeing the LEDs flash on and off if all is well there. And as you can see, that looks like it tested okay. Following along with the Instructable, I went into the Arduino IDE board manager and searched for R4 and installed the board package for the Arduino Uno R4 boards. I then selected the R4 board by going to Tools Board, Arduino Uno R4 Boards, Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. I then went ahead and took this opportunity to set the COM port to reflect the one where the board was plugged in. Then I opened up the Game of Life sketch by going to File, Example, scroll down to the Uno R4 Wi-Fi examples, and then it was under LED Matrix. Then I compiled that and sent it to the board. And it looks like it worked okay. And if you're wondering what it's doing here, just like the Instructable says, it's going through a Game of Life program. If you're not familiar with Game of Life, it's kind of neat. I'll put a link in the description to the Wikipedia page, and it's just pretty cool. And one of the kind of characters you can have in there is called the Glider, and it is definitely kind of a part of hacker culture. Next, the Instructable mentions the Wi-Fi functionality of this new Uno R4. Specifically, it has a link to a Wi-Fi LED control thing. I followed the link and that's what you see here. And I thought, hey, I'll just show them this and that's good enough to show what that does. But then I was like, man, let's see if it works for real. So I went and copied the code and pasted. And you can see here, I had to make a new tab for the security info. And then I also had to reference that in the uh, header there because it was missing. And once I got that, I compiled it and sent it over to the Uno. And you can see here the SSID showed up that I had set it to. So I connected to that with my phone and went to the IP that's hard coded there in the source code. And it came up with a very simple page that basically had this on and off link. And you can see that that worked as expected as I went back and forth on that. This is a real nice example that can give you a base to kind of work from if you want to have some kind of Wi-Fi controlled thingamajig 
because you know even if we're turning on an LED in this example, that could just as easily be a relay or who knows what else. The next thing the Instructable focuses on is related to the real-time clock inside the microcontroller. First thing it wants us to do is download this matrix clock sketch and we're going to compile and push that to the board. Here you can see after we push the code, the LED matrix is looking like a digital clock. But the time it starts out with is based on the compile time of when you compiled the sketch and sent it to the board. And you can see right at the very beginning there, it was like, it must have been like 10, 53, and 50 seconds or something, because not long after that, it's changed it to 54. And then just to show you, I'll speed this up a little bit, and you'll see it hit 55. So you can see here that the clock program is working, but if we remove the power and hook it back up, it just starts right back over at 10, 53. It does not keep the time when the power is off. So in order to remedy that situation, the Instructable Next instructs us to put this battery kit together. That way we can have a battery backup to the real-time clock module on the Uno. I cut off one of the unneeded pins on the positive side of the battery holder. Next I cut both the jumper in half as well as the heat shrink tubing in half. I then put the heat shrink tubing on both pieces of the jumper. Next, I stripped and soldered the two pieces of jumper onto the battery holder. Then I heated up the heat shrink to get that to stay put. I then opened up the battery and stuck it into the battery holder making sure to put the positive side of the battery to match the positive side of the battery holder. Next, I connected the positive lead from the battery holder to the VRTC pin on the Uno R4, and then I connected the negative lead to that ground pin right next to it. I then powered the Uno back up and you can see where it starts at the 53, then goes to 54, like usual. And then when I disconnect the power and reconnect it back up, you can see that it doesn't start over again at 1053. It has kept the time, thanks to the battery backup. The next section of the Instructable has us messing with this multifunction expansion shield. It seems to be a clone of the Velleman VMA-209 shield. So it instructs us to head over to that link in the Destructible, which has a zip file available that has a bunch of example code that will work along with this shield. The Destructible states that the voltmeter sketch, as well as the up-down counter sketch, may be the most interesting to play with out of the box. So we are going to give those a try. The first one I tried was the up-down counter one, and it had a display that would increment or decrement based on which buttons you were pressing up or down. So that made use of the display as well as taking input from the buttons. The next example was the voltmeter sketch. And as you can see at the top of the source here, it says that it reads the value of the blue potentiometer on the VMA-209 and shows it on the display. So you can see if we compile and send that to the Uno, and then I use a small screwdriver to turn that little thing, and you can see the display change up or down. The last part of our instructable here is talking about lock sport. For some, this can be quite a controversial topic. Some people seem to have a hard time separating criminal acts or criminals from those who may enjoy messing around with locks. I pretty much grew up in this old family hardware store down in South Carolina. I was so fortunate to be able to mess with all this stuff. And I made so many sets of keys for customers on this old key cutter and had the opportunity to play with all kinds of locks and safes with never having any intent at all of doing anything criminal. Rogues knew a good deal about lock picking long before locksmiths discussed it. If a lock is not so inviolable as it has hitherto been deemed to be, surely it is to the interest of honest persons to know this fact, because the dishonest are certain to apply the knowledge practically. 
the spread of the knowledge is necessary to give fair play to those who might suffer by ignorance. AC, hubs, locks and safes, the construction of locks. I believe if most folks try to adhere to the tools code of ethics like you see here, most things should be okay. But there are gonna be some people that are just gonna be ignorant of things and no matter what you say, they just aren't gonna get it. So this is a pretty neat little tool that's been included in the hacker box. It's got six picks and this tensioner here. And by the way, it can be hard to get out, but don't worry about giving it a little bit of muscle. If you're just getting started, these transparent padlocks are kind of fun. You can visually see how the pins work while you are trying to pick them. And it's just kind of cool and it helps you get an idea of how things work when you're picking a lock. They aren't perfect, but they're pretty good to just get a rough idea of things. Definitely check out all the resources that are available there in the instructable. Things such as the tool website are fantastic. You can learn about picking, maybe find a local meetup. It also has a bunch of information on state laws. And here are a few of my favorite YouTubers in the lock picking slash lock sport realm. First here we've got Bosnian Bill, the lock picking lawyer, and then McNally Official. And check those out, I think you'll dig them. If you've never tried it before, I encourage you to give it a go. It's a pretty rewarding hobby that can come in handy sometimes. It's fun to go around the yard sales and look for old locks, or I'm sure you may know some neighbors or family members that have locks that they've lost the keys to. Those are fun ones to give a go. It looks like we're gonna have ourselves another giveaway. The nice folks at Hacker Boxes have graciously offered to send a Hacker Box 106 to a randomly picked commenter. We'll be picking the comment on October 5th. And remember, Hacker Boxes only ships to US addresses for this giveaway. So if your comment's picked, but you don't have a US shipping address that we can use, we'll need to pick someone else. Good luck. As of the time of this recording, there are still Hacker Box 106s in stock. If you don't win the giveaway, you want to get one, check them out. Or go ahead and subscribe. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.